Hello, I'm Jacob from Intrepid Protoworks, and today we're going to cover measures of central tendency as part of our coverage of descriptive statistics. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and parse down our data set into 30,000 data points. This is being done purely for the purpose of making it faster to calculate. To this, we're creating a list called data list, and we're going to set uh, our loop to break uh, at 30,000 data points. This will give us a data set of 30,000, which is named data list. The full data set is about 3 million data points long. This isn't typically that big of a deal, but again, we're just doing a quick and easy go over of descriptive statistics. Let's add in a couple of comments, then proceed on to calculating the average. Note there are better ways to take subsamples of this to make sure there isn't any kind of pre-existing order in the data. We'll go over how to sample data at another point. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in a print command that will print out the top row of our data set. Now we'll run this real quick in a new dedicated IPython console. You can go up to run, configure, and then select execute in a new IPython console. We left the print command from last time. Let's go ahead and get rid of that real quick. And let's go ahead and get rid of the iWorks command. This should leave us with just the labels of our variables. I like to copy and paste these labels into the code so I can reference it in the future. I also like to put in the order in which they appear. That way I can just reference that real quick without having to count it out every time. Now let's go ahead and start in on the average. Go ahead and go ahead and create a variable called sum total and a variable called sample size. Sum total will be adding every data point of income together and sample size will be just an iterator so we know how much data we have. Next we'll go ahead and add in a loop for row in data list starting after the first element and continuing on until the very end of the data set. Now we're going to add each income of each individual person to the sum total income. Then we're going to just add one to our sample size for each line that we go through. This is good when we don't know the specific size of our sample. Lastly, we're just going to calculate the average by taking the sum total and dividing it by the sample size. We'll go on to go ahead and print out the average so we can see what our result is. Then save and run. Now you can see here 1.7 million is a little bit extreme. This is actually incorrect. I decided to go ahead and leave this in here so we can go ahead and solve this problem. We're going to go ahead and add a print command so we can figure out what is going on. We're going to stick this into the middle of our loop. Let's just go ahead and print out the entire row and then go ahead and save and run. The problem is obvious almost immediately. We can see the nines in the income. This represents non-applicable if we go back and reference the uh, codes for our data. Now to fix this, let's add an if statement and take the integer value of the income and compare that to the nines. If we end up with something that is not nines, we'll add it to our data set. Otherwise, we'll skip it. We could add other filters here if we want, but we'll worry about that another time. Now we'll just get the syntax correct and then hit save and run. Now let's go ahead and comment our print statement and run it. $34,000, that's a much more reasonable value, if a little bit depressing. Do note that we're also including values for miners and dependents. Most of these people do not generate any form of income themselves and rely on their household. Next, we're going to go ahead and cover the mode. To this, let's go back and reference the codes for race. We're going to go ahead and use race rather than income. We could do modal income, but that would require some additional calculations, such as putting people in the income brackets. It's not really within the scope of this video, so let's just continue with using race. We're going ahead and typing out our codes here for each race, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and comment the numbers that is associated with each. Once we're done commenting everything, we're going to go ahead and add a for loop. This for loop will go through and look at the race variable for each row in our list, starting after the first row, which again is our header. We'll use a series of if statements to evaluate, comparing the race variable of the row to a value that's possible for the race variable to have. If they match, we'll go ahead and add it to a corresponding variable representing the number present of that race in our sample. We'll copy and paste the if statements to make sure that everything is matching with syntax, and then we'll also need to go through and make sure that we're comparing strings to strings or numbers to numbers. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and compare strings to strings just to make sure everything is as simple as practical. Now let's make a variable called mode. We're going to use the max function in Python and put in each of our race variables here. This will output the variable which appears most frequently in our data set. Now once these are in place, let's go ahead and print out these variables so we can see what they are. And then let's go ahead and print out our mode. Now we can go ahead and hit save and run. Note that will give the number associated with these, not the name of the variable. This isn't completely ideal, but it still gives us the information we are looking for. Alternatively, we could also use dictionaries and then include labels with that. Now let's go ahead and go over the median. The median, mathematically, will be the most simple for us to deal with tonight. 
but in Python, it'll be the most confusing for us to program. So try to follow along. We're going to go ahead and do median education first. To do this, we're going to go ahead and define a function. We're going to call it take fifth because the educational variable is the fifth in the row. And we'll want to sort our data by education attained. And this quick function lets us do that. Next, we'll want to go ahead and resort our data list. Uh, we'll sort this according to education attained, which is again the fifth element that occurs in the row. In the future, we may want to define a new list of our data, as this actually will change the ordering of the data within our original list. Now let's get the sample size. We're going to do it a little bit differently. We're just going to get the length of the list that we're using. Once we have this typed out, we can go ahead and divide this by two to get the middlemost data points location. Now, if the middlemost data point is not a whole number, in other words, it lands between two rows of data, then uh, we should take the average of the two rows. But for sake of simplicity, we're just going to round to the nearest integer value. Now we'll take our data list and put our middle point and make sure it's an integer and round it again to the nearest integer value. Let's make sure we have all the closing brackets we need and then go ahead and print out the median education. We're going to add a string that will indicate that we're looking at median education. And then we will look at the median variable we just calculated. Let's make sure we don't forget to add in the point in the row we're looking at, otherwise we'll just end up looking at the entire row. Now we see that our median education is coded as 6. If you look back at our data codes for the education variable, we'll see that that reference is grade 12. In other words, the median most person in our data set attained a high school education. Lastly, let's just take a look at median income real quick. So we'll take the sixth element and go through and see what that comes out to look like. We actually selected the wrong one. We took EDU CD rather than income total. So let's just go ahead and grab the row itself real quick and then see how that turned out. And our median income is zero. That's probably because we're also still looking at minors and dependents. All right, that does it for looking at measures of central tendency. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see our future videos. Next time, we'll be looking at measures of dispersion.